This is a GNL ASAT, uh, very much like the first GNL that I ever played. And uh, I was very fortunate to be living in uh, Anaheim, California, which is the town next to Fullerton. And I, I developed a really good relationship with everybody at the company, including Mr. Fender. And uh, very often I would get a call from GNL saying, Mr. Fender has something that he'd like you to try. Can you come down? And of course I would. And uh, he was a really, really interesting guy, very nice guy. And he was always interested in what the player thought. You know, a lot of people tell you what they think you should think. And uh, Leo was more like, uh, I'd play a guitar and I'd say, well, I, you know, he says, which do you like better, this one or this one? I said, I, I kind of like this one. Why? Uh, I think it's a little bit brighter. Why? Oh, it might be because the pickups are like this. So, you know, he was very, very, I think that's why he did so well, because he listened to the musician and uh, wanted to know what the players wanted. So uh, I did uh, play a G&L much like this for quite a long time, and uh, again, uh, excellent sounding guitar. <laughs> When you're getting started playing rock lead guitar, um, many times feel and vibe and tone is a lot more important than speed. So, and actually it's, it's a lot harder sometimes. So try to just grab a note and see if you can, and when you if, you, if you have a lot of distortion on, you need to really play that note cleanly and try not to let the other strings ring, ring through and, and give it a little bit of attitude with some vibrato, something like this. And then try just uh, playing a melody just on that string, sliding it up and down. Another thing you can do is, uh, if you're playing kind of a, a rhythmic lead part, something like uh, a lot of bands might use just a two or three note riff and you can play it. What I'm doing is accenting with my right hand different parts of the notes. If I played it all straight, straight eighth notes, it would sound a little bit static and boring. So if I accent a little bit, it implies a rhythm into the lick which uh, propels it forward and, and if you're, hopefully your listeners will kind of, it'll make them want to tap their foot. Um, for playing rhythm guitar, uh, a lot of times it's really good to just use less of a chord, don't do full strums, actually mute with your hand, put the palm of your hand where, just, just after where the string goes over the bridge, and then play down strokes again. And if you accent, accent on the quarter notes, so you hear a strong one, then a weak one. And it, that, again, gives a more propelling movement to it. And 
And then if you hit full chords open and let them ring, they're going to really jump out. And you have a lot of variety just within a small little pattern. <laughs> So note durations are really important. Uh, you have to decide how long you want to hold that note and either cut it off with your left hand or mute it with your right hand. Because uh, I find that it, your intention needs to be in place before you actually start playing. So you know already when you're going to stop and when you're going to start. Then it'll be much cleaner. So uh, maybe if, if uh, Django had some distortion on, uh, he might sound like this. Ha, 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 ha.